So let's move on now. So microprocessor means it's a CPU on a single integrated circuit or simply we can call I, IC. That's why we call this as IC. And this is the brain of the computer. And there are so many different versions of the microprocessors. If you look at the olden days, we started with 8085 and then 8086. You know, the olden days, the computers were equal to one room size and it was getting more and more smaller. Now it's like the laptop, even our smartphone, it's a smart computer actually. It has everything, what can you perform in the computer? And Intel, uh, they, are, uh, develop, they are keep developing different versions of the microprocessors. They are specialist or expert of developing microprocessors. Uh, we have Pentium series, Pentium 1, Pentium 2 and so on. And nowadays we have dual core, quad core and so on. And there are several companies. AMD is another company who is developing the microprocessors and Opatron and Penon, Shannon, Broadway. Uh, this is another company. So there are different versions, different types of microprocessors. Each processor has its own capability, one clock speed. So if you pay little money, you will buy the processor according to the money what you are paying for. So it's like uh, like the Norway, there is a saying called um, what you get, what you pay for, right? So similarly, uh, why it's like that? Because the clock speed is uh, different and um, the processor capacity is different uh, and so on. So that is why when you pay the low cost, you get the component accordingly. If you pay a little more higher cost, then you get a different, um, another level of processor, which can handle more complications and with the high speed, that is very important. The high speed and uh, low power, these are two important factors when we consider these processors. Uh, if you remember the LPM search engine, uh, the reading report you did last semester. So I always mentioned about high performance, that it means speed, high speed and low power. So whenever you design these kind of processors, then these two factors are very, very important. So low power, high performance and size must be smaller and overall cost should be very less because as a user, you are buying this processor. You don't care about the technical things. Of course, you want the high speed, but you are more concerned about the price. So these all are the challenges for the manufacturers, the companies who is producing these processors. Okay, so we don't need to go into the business side or commercial side. So, but these are the technical part. So you should know that. Okay, so microprocessor, it contains no RAM, no ROM, no IO ports on chip. Everything is external. And microcontroller, microcontroller means just the opposite. So everything is inside the chip. So microcontroller contains all the units as shown in this figure. So that is why we call this is a uh, computer on chip. So integrated circuits, because everything is integrated circuits. We are integrating everything into the chip, but here it has all the units inside. So just, you can see here, this is the chip. So we have the pins, IO pins. So this is an input pin, output pin, or we can decide, we can configure this as an input pin if I want and I can configure this pin as output pin. This is the flexibility of the microcontroller. The microprocessor is not like that. Microprocessor is very strict. This is the pin I define as an input pin. When I design the microprocessor, that is an input pin. You cannot change that. But microcontroller, it's, it's not like that. It's more flexible. Uh, that is the difference uh, between microprocessor and microcontroller. Advantages of a microcontroller. It has its own advantages and own disadvantages as well. Okay, so uh, microcontroller, it's not as powerful as the microprocessor. So microprocessor is the application, uh, this is called ASIC, application specific integrated circuit. So microcontroller, you can even uh, you can manufacture or develop a general purpose microcontroller. You can use this microcontroller in the washing machine. You can use the microcontroller in the microwave oven in your home. Uh, you can use this in your oven, or you can use this microcontroller in your motorcycle. The same microcontroller, you can use it. Firmware, you can change. 
you can change the programs. For example, the washing machine, you have a different washing programs, but in your cook in the oven, so you have different uh, cooking programs, right? If you change uh, the knob, you can change the program. So similarly, in the, in, the, in the car, we have a different types of microcontroller. So microcontroller is a little more flexible. The microprocessor is very powerful and strong, um, but it's very application specific. For example, if you develop the microprocessor, you can use only for the laptop or the PC or the, or the aero, aeronautics applications. But microcontroller, it's very flexible. You can use it anywhere. That is why if you study one particular microcontroller, how you are going to program that microcontroller, you can apply the same knowledge in different applications. Okay, so microcontroller, uh, other advantages are um, it's uh, low power. Where is my cursor? So, uh, but low power consumption, smaller in size and low cost. These are advantages. Most of the microcontroller units are application specific here as well and different from general purpose microprocessors okay so i can uh, produce a micro a microcontroller only for the washing machine or only for the microwave one or automobiles uh, so where do we use microcontrollers this is uh, very interesting so we are using in the treadmill we are using in our even in our mobile phones in the cameras and washing machines and coffee machines and refrigerators and so on. So even in our oscilloscope, you are using oscilloscopes in your lab, right? So even here we are using the microcontrollers. So microcontrollers are everywhere. So it's, it's interesting to learn about the microcontroller. So what are the differences between microprocessor and microcontroller? We had seen uh, already almost all the points uh, just from technical perspective, we will see a few more points. Uh, in microprocessor, we need several instructions to move the data from external memory to the CPU. That is the processor. Why we need several instructions? Because its memory is located outside. So we need more instructions. So it will take more time comparatively. But in microcontroller, just one or two instructions are enough to move the data from memory to the CPU. Why? Because it's, in, it's inside this chip. So the, the transmission time is also much less. And in microprocessor, only few pins are multifunction. So when I design the microprocessor, let me take the pen. So when I uh, design the microprocessor, so maybe for example, I designed like a eight pins microprocessor here. Usually microprocessor are having more pins. Uh, but among these eight pins, maybe I can have only one pin as a flexible. Maybe this pin is a flexible one. Maybe let's say flexible, we can say F. But in microcontroller, I design also the eight pin microcontroller. This is the microprocessor. And I use the micro control, sorry, uh, microcontroller. So microcontroller, I also design uh, the same eight pins. So among the eight pins, I can make almost like a four or five pins or even more. I can make as a flexible. So it means as a user, I can configure these pins. So here in microprocessor only, uh, if I configure means what? I can perform multi-functions. So in one application, I can use this pin as a for timer and another application, I can use this uh, pin for ADC, so on, so on. So, but in microprocessor, it's not like that. I have only one pin. So whenever we design the microprocessor, actually, uh, we have to think the future. So in case if some applications, if it needs some flexibility, we need to provide some extra pins. We, we keep one or two pins as an extra pin with flexibility, but in microcontroller as a default, you can have so many pins. So that is what I mentioned here. Uh, in microcontroller, large number of pins can be multifunction. And designer can decide on the amount of ROM and RAM for, and IO ports. Why? Because everything is external. So now I have one G, uh, sorry, uh, now I have maybe uh, 512 MB RAM. Uh, I'm not satisfied, so I can change to one GB because it's external. But here, 
fixed program and fixed data memory. So here I cannot change the RAM. So I buy the microcontroller, it has 512 MB uh, RAM or the flash memory. So I cannot change this at all because this is inbuilt. That is the drawback or one small drawback of this microcontroller. Here we have the flexibility. We can add the memories uh, as much as we want. It has some limitations as well. Uh, it uses different ICs for memory and IO. Yes, when I design the PCB, I have the microprocessor here and I can have the memory chip. I can have one RAM one and RAM two and RAM three. I can have more chips. And, but here it's not like that. So microcontroller is just a single uh, in one PCB. If I have a microcontroller, uh, then I have everything is uh, inbuilt. So I cannot change that. So it has no inbuilt timer microprocessor, but this microcontroller has input timer. So this is also another advantage. So everything is uh, good, and, uh, good and bad in each side. But uh, according to the application where you want to use, you can decide you want to use microprocessor or microcontroller. If you decide to use microcontroller, what kind of microcontroller you want to use, that is important.